Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Click to subscribe Believing Beings and press the bell icon to get notified about new videos. How to make permissible for women scuba diving or enjoying the beach with the husband? As I'm a Muslim, I'm trying to resist myself from all haram activities and preserve myself for my wife. And I want to enjoy the beauty of earth and hang out with my wife at many places. The second part of the question was that how is it possible to make permissible for the woman to do scuba diving and enjoy the beach with the husband and he likes traveling and he likes to stay away from the haram activities that he can make possible for his wife and he wants to enjoy the life and hang out. What is the solution? As far as scuba diving is concerned, it's very much possible that even women can do scuba diving. Number one, scuba diving, you have to wear the complete suit. When you wear the scuba diving suit, that itself is hijab. Complete body is covered, mashallah. So when you're doing scuba diving, and but naturally if you're not an expert, the only care that you have to take is that see to it that when your wife is doing scuba diving, you have a lady who's a trainer. When you are going for scuba diving the first time, you take a gent who's a trainer. But if your wife is there, see to it that it's a lady trainer. If both are going together, you pay a little bit more money and get two different trainers. But one trainer can take care of, you know, four, five, six people. So you have two trainers together so that your wife has a lady trainer, you have a gent trainer. I mean, scuba diving, you first they show you the signs, etc. And as long as you take care of the hijab, it's very much possible. The only care here is taken that you have a lady trainer and then they show you the signs to go up is like that, to come down is like that and what you have to do, how you have to take the, uh, uh, the uh, cylinder which is there behind your back and how do you take the nozzle where you put in the mouth and there were a few occasions that mashallah me and my family did scuba diving. I remember uh, we had uh, gone to Maldives and we did scuba diving even in, in Malaysia, we, we did scuba diving, it's, it's a very good, mashallah, it's good enjoyment. So there's nothing wrong in women doing scuba diving as long as they take care of the hijab. See to it, it's a lady trainer and you're properly and, you're, and your complete body is covered. So there's no problem at all. I don't think so what is wrong. A woman also can do scuba diving if she wants to see the, the, the life, which is you know, one of the things which is the beauty. If you really go in the scuba diving, you know, the level, first level, second level, the more deeper you go, the beauty that you see, it really, you know, which of the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will you deny? And you see the life underwater, the, the, the beautiful colors, the corals, the fish, the, the sea life, it's an experience which I would advise that if Allah gives the opportunity, you should not miss it. The life underwater is a different world altogether. Of course, it's a bit scary. You get scared to go, but if you, inshallah, you just take the advice, take the training, it's very simple, it's very safe, as long as you are the proper trainer. So there is no restriction why a Muslim woman cannot do scuba diving. Coming to your second part of the first part of the question, that how can you enjoy with your wife on the beach? But naturally, normally when you go on the beach, you cannot do things what normal other non-Muslims do. The beach where is not Islamic. So my advice to you would be that if you want to enjoy with your wife on the beach, see that it's a secluded, secured beach, otherwise it's difficult. And I remember in, in the year 2016, when I was officially called by the Terengganu state, that's in Malaysia. In 2016, I was invited by the chief minister of the Terengganu state. And that is before I did Hijra to Malaysia. He met me in, in Korea in 2015, December, and he invited me. And in April 2016, I came as a guest of the government. There, when I went to Terangganu, many people said, Terangganu has many beaches, and one of the best beaches is Redang, but you know, you cannot go there. I said, Why can't I go there? You know, because there are foreigners and the obscenely dressed. I said, Okay. Because then, if the obscenely dressed, of course, we cannot go. Later on, after a few days, the chief minister of Terengganu, he said, Dr. Zakir, would you and your family like to go to Redang Beach? I'm saying, how can I go? The people tell me there are foreigners and obscenely dressed. 
So I thought maybe the, the chief minister doesn't know about it or anyway I said if you can make arrangement no problem. So he made arrangement for us to go to that beach and when we were going we had the police escort, we had the patrol, you know the police were there in a separate boat, we went in the boat and when we reached the Redang beach we were shocked that the beach was empty. So the chief minister had mashallah cleared the complete beach so we could not see a single soul on the beach. Alhamdulillah, it is a niyama from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when people told me I cannot go to Redang Beach because there are foreigners and you know Westerners and they are not properly dressed and it's not appropriate for a Muslim or a Muslima to go, go to a beach where people are obscenely dressed. It was a beautiful beach, the sand was beautiful, the water was beautiful and no one on the beach except me and the family. Alhamdulillah, it's a niyama from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that reminds me that when we, when we went to Indonesia, and when I was the guest of the governor of Lombok and Lombok is one of the places in Indonesia which is known for halal tourism and they had given us a, a very exclusive resort which had a private beach so but naturally if Allah gives you the opportunity where you can visit such beaches where there is no soul it's a niyama but for a normal person also it's possible not that you cannot enjoy on the beach with your wife but you cannot go to the public beaches what you have to do you have to go to the beaches which are not that famous or go to a beach at a time where there is no one always there is a time sometime in the beach where people are more crowded in the evening you go in the morning if in the morning go in the evening or go to the beaches which are less crowded but let me give you a few tips that when you go to a beach because it's a public place but naturally even if you wear the burkini which is the Islamic version of the swimming suit but natural that's fine if you're going to only ladies swimming pool fine but if you're going to the beach where there are chances the gents can see so that's not most of them are not totally Islamic or halal so my advice is that when you go to such beaches see to it you go to a time where there's no one there and take a spot where no one is and that time on top of the burkini the lady can wear a jilbab, an overcoat or a baya. And if you do that, it is very safe. Your hijab is completely there. Even with that, in a public beach, avoid. You should not go. It's not correct, you know, to expose the female where all the other namera are there. But if you go to a beach which is, which is secluded and there is less chance anyone is there, so on top of the burkini, if you wear the jilbab or the abaya and then go into the water, it is safe. You know, you're wearing the hijab, you're wearing the thing. It is uncomfortable, but you can enjoy the beach and I've gone with my family in different parts of the world. Alhamdulillah, I've enjoyed with my family, with my daughters on the beach, but taking care of the hijab. Taking care of the hijab because that is of utmost importance. So you can do halal enjoyment taking care of the Sharia principles. It may sound very weird, but Alhamdulillah, we take care of the hijab. Allah has given us different opportunities. You know, we, we don't do dawah for that, but Allah has given us, mashallah, we have gone to the best of places in the world, the best of beaches. When we went to Maldives, we went to Mauritius, we were guests of the government, and that is an exclusive enjoyment, which is not possible for a normal person unless Allah wants it. But even otherwise, it is possible that you can enjoy a beach but not the public beaches which are crowded you can go to the public beaches which don't have people at a time which is not the prime time and see at the time when don't go at a time when the high tide when the high tide and low tide are meet that is the best time to go which is the safest time and you follow the instruction on top of the burkini which is the islamic uh, swimsuit on top of that you wear the abaya it may be a little bit uncomfortable surely when no one is there you can enjoy with your family alone on such private spots or in public beaches where no one is there this one and i remember that my family and we have mashallah when we go i remember that most of the time we used to be invited you know me and my son giving lecture among the gents my wife and my two daughters giving lectures among the ladies so all five of us go we go to the conference that in for about four five days then we extend for two three days and we enjoy like we had gone to Mauritius we went for a conference all five of us took all five of us took active part 
We extended a few days and enjoyed the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We went to Indonesia, we went to different parts of the world. We had a lecture tour for 10 days. We extended by another three, four days. We gave lectures in different cities of Indonesia and we enjoyed even the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I remember that you know, my daughter, that my youngest daughter, Rushda, she's extra particular even when she was a kid. My daughter is a particular about hijab, but even when she was a kid. And I remember that in our school, Islamic International School, we encourage the girls to wear the scarf from nursery. It becomes compulsory from junior kg, but from nursery, even at the age of two and a half, three, they're supposed to wear scarves. And I remember my daughter that even when she was three years old, and if by mistake, if I opened the door and if a gent enters the house in the hall, and she said, she said, Abba, how did you allow a gent to enter without my permission? She's only four years old. She used to go under the table. I mean, for a four-year-old girl, covering the head, covering the head is not compulsory. But she was so particular that she used to go under the table and she would get angry at me that, Abba, how can you allow a gent to enter without my permission? I mean, Alhamdulillah, may Allah, may Allah bless her. Even at the age of four, she was so particular. And I remember that, you know, me and my family, we love the nature. We love going to waterfalls. And we have been to several waterfalls. But we make it a point that when we go to a waterfall, we go at a time when it is not crowded. When we don't have any other tourist. And at that time, when there's no one in the waterfall, the water is falling and the, and the pool below the water is there. So the hijab is much more maintained. So besides they having the, the Islamic swimsuit, on top of them, they always wear the abaya. We never know it's a public place and there's no one there, but suddenly someone may pop up. So if you are going to public places, in spite of wearing the Islamic swimsuit, there's no one there, me, my son and my daughter are there, there's no one else. We go, we go in the waterfall and my daughter Rujda, she wants to jump from a height, you know, climbing the rocks. It's dangerous, but Alhamdulillah, she has that uh, thrill that she has. So, and this is just a narration to you that just because a woman in Islam does hijab, that doesn't mean that she cannot enjoy life, as long as the enjoyment is halal. And I remember that when we had last been to USA, that was in 2009, and my youngest daughter, Rujda, she was hardly about nine years old or maybe 10 years old. And we went to the seven flags and there was bungee bung, jumping, bungee jumping. And bungee jumping, you know, we have to, the height was something 450 feet. It was one of the tallest bungee jumping there. And she asked me, Abba, can I come? And I was 100% sure that she wouldn't be allowed. I said, go and ask the person in charge. If he allows you, you can come. And I was shocked that she was allowed. Normally there's a height factor that only if you reach certain height, you'll be allowed. And she was very short. And the person in charge said, yes, you can go. And that was one of the most difficult times. I like thrill rides, but I thought that 100% she'll be refused. And the person said, yes, you can go. So I, my son and my youngest daughter Rujda went to bungee jumping. And imagine we had to pull the string. And I was very scared. Scared that this young girl of nine years old, and if something happens to her, who will be to blame? Me. So somehow the other we pulled the string. I mean, my son had the string. He pulled it and we came down and went on top. It was a very high bungee jumping. And then I realized that all these thrill lights that are there, if they allow someone to do the thrill light, they take the precaution. And, but natural, they have some rules and regulations, they have some precautions. So in this way, mashallah, we have gone to thrill rides, to roller coaster, bungee jumping. And also remember that uh, we had gone to Dubai and we wanted to do skydiving. So we said, okay, let's go for skydiving. Again there, in skydiving, you have someone you have to jump with. So can a lady do? Yes. The condition should be that the person jumping with the Muslim lady should be a lady. Can't be a man. Hijab is broken. So we went there to Dubai, which is one of the highest uh, level where skydiving is done. I think it's 14,000 feet 
height that is about more than three, four kilometers. Imagine four kilometers and the first time in my life we were doing. So we went at the counter to ask that can we get a lady trainer? And Alhamdulillah, the owner there, Masha recognized us and he gave all of us complimentary. I remember it was more than 4,000 dirham, more than a thousand dollars for one jump. And he gave all of us complimentary and he arranged lady trainers. So there are lady trainers also. For the, normally, they have ladies and gents and many a times it is opposite sex and you know, they don't take care that ladies for ladies and gents for gents. But I insisted that for my family members and I had my f friend who had family members. So the ladies had ladies jumping with them and me and my son, we had a, we had a gent with us. It was a wonderful experience. It was like, you know, we are going at 250 kilometers per hour driving a motorcycle. We were falling at the speed of, I think, 250 kilometers per hour. It was an experience. In a few seconds, we cover most of it. And then the trainer pulls the parachute and we come down. And along with us, there's another person jumping who does the video recording. In my case, when we jumped from the plane, it requires guts to take the step forward or someone pushes you from behind. When we jumped, the trainer who was with me, he happened to be a westerner. You're the white, you're the white westerner. And he said, Dr. Zakir, I accepted Islam after watching your videos. So it was an honor for me that Alhamdulillah, the trainer with me who was there, he accepted Islam after hearing my videos. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him hidayah. But the person who was doing the video recording, his video camera did not work properly. So when we landed, I was very happy. It was experienced. He said, Dr. Zakir, can you jump with me again? I said, again? I said, why? Because my video didn't work. I said, good. I'm getting a complimentary second jump. First jump was complimentary. The second jump is, and again, after a few minutes, we went into the plane. We took off and we had the second jump in Dubai. At the Palm Jumeirah, you can see the whole of Dubai from top. It is a wonderful experience. I know many people would not want to take these daredevil uh, jumps or rides, but Alhamdulillah, me and my family we enjoy. So you ask this question, can scuba diving be done? Can you enjoy on the beach? You like going out, hanging out? Can you? Of course you can. But naturally Allah facilitates. So just to let you know, I'm giving the personal experience of me and my family that mashallah to show that all in the family are dais and dayas, me, my wife, my son and both my daughters, all five of us, we have traveled to umpteen number of countries all over the world just for sake of dawah. And while doing dawah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the opportunity to enjoy life. We have done in the, in the water jet skiing, we have done a variety of sports in the water and believe me, all of it, most of it, even my daughters take part, even my wife. And Alhamdulillah, we see to it that we take care of the Islamic hijab. We are very particular about it. So just to tell you that that doesn't mean that because Muslim are, the Muslim women, because they are in hijab, they cannot enjoy life. They can, but we have to take precaution. As long as it doesn't break any rule of the Sharia. Many times we think that it's not permissible to enjoy. Of course you can enjoy. We, Alhamdulillah, my children, I have trained them to sleep on the floor. To sleep in the worst of places. And Allah has given the opportunity to sleep in the best of hotels. The five-star hotel, the five-star deluxe, the seven-star, the ten-star, what do you want to call it? Allah has blessed us. We don't do this, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us. I always tell that a dai should have the least requirements. We see to it that we request. Initially, when we started Dawa, we always requested that we want an economic class. And after a few years, we made it a point that we bear the cost of all our travels. So it's always mentioned in, in the invitation letter, when we accept anything, that we will take care of our flight tickets and our accommodation, unless someone forces the accommodation. But there have been times that mashallah, many of the fans, they have sent their private jet planes. Imagine we tell that we should be simple, we want to travel, we want to travel in economic class. Allah has given us where we can travel in business class and first class. But we prefer saving the money 
and spending it on dawa. But Allah has given us the opportunity that several times we have traveled in private jet planes. There was once one of my fan when he sent his private jet plane and I told him that why are you sending a private jet plane? You, I would prefer traveling to travel in a normal economic class and the money that we save we can spend on dawa. He said, I normally send my plane for celebrities. Can I get more sawab than sending for a da'i of Islam? I mean, that was his way. Alhamdulillah. So Allah has given us the opportunity. And that is the reason Allah say that if you want this dunya, Allah gives you this dunya but does not give you akhirah. If you strive for akhirah, Allah gives you akhirah and dunya. I doubt there may be few people in the world who have enjoyed the beauty of the world so much. Like Allah has blessed us. So just to tell you that, mashallah, we do it for sake of Allah, we do it with a pure niya. That your intention should be pure. Your niya should, there should be a class in your niya. And if you do with this, you do it for akhirah, Allah gives you akhirah in a dunya. Believe me, we do it only for sake of Allah. We travel thousands of kilometers for sake of Allah and Allah inshallah will give us best in the akhirah but he has even given the best in this world for the reason that I have mentioned these personal experiences of mine is just to let the people know they think that okay if you're a dai you know you have a very uh, life which is absolutely boring and you have to have a boring life then only will get then will Allah give you akhirah it's not like that I doubt anyone has enjoyed life so much like the way me and my family has done. All the halal enjoyments, mashallah, with the thrill rides, with the best of things in life, mashallah. But our main niya was dawa. We did for akhira, we did it for Allah, and Allah has given us the best in this world. We did hijrah for sake of Allah, and Allah has given a better life for us in Malaysia as compared to what we were in India. So we do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah gives us multiple times more than we ever desired. So this answer was to your question, sister, uh, brother, that can women do scuba diving? Can you enjoy with your wife on the beaches? Can you, have, can you go out and hang out? But please be careful that whenever you do all these things, see to it, you do not break any of the rules of the Sharia. See to it that you maintain your hijab and don't compromise on your hijab. If you have to compromise on a hijab, you better don't do that thrill ride or don't do that thing which is thrill. See to it, it is secure and inshallah Allah will give you the best in this world as well as in the akhirah.